Okay, now from this position here, left foot front fighting stance. Okay, attacking side, you're going to practice the low roundhouse kick, then one, two punch. Everybody understand? Okay, low roundhouse kick. This is your blocking action here. Notice my leg. I'm going to give a little bit to the kick. Again, give. Then he's going to follow one, two punch. Parry, hook, then knee kick. I also have this option here, striking the inside of the knee with the low roundhouse kick. We're going to keep it simple now. From here, one, two, eight. So I'm creating a little bit of a scenario, a fight scenario. From here, fighting, he's attacking one, two, eight. And follow up here. Again, block, block, hook, eight. knee kick. A little bit faster, more. Ish, 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 ish. Everybody understand? Oos. Oos. Right, let's try it. Face each other. Oos. So slowly, three times. Ready? Fighting stance. I go one. This exchange can get a little bit confusing. Two. You can notice how elaborate the techniques get. Three. You can even add more combinations and create the ultimate Outside. fight scenario. One. Three. Four. Okay, next drill, left foot front fighting stance. In this position now, we're going to work on counter movement, okay, after opponent attacks. In this position, he's going to throw the low roundhouse kick, okay. I block, switch, then counter with the same leg. Again, from this position, block, switch, kick. So from here, block, switch, kick. Now, when you block, don't do this movement here. See how my weight goes back here? Strong kick here is just going to be overpowered. You understand? The idea is from here, kick weak, then round us kick. You understand? Oops. This position here. So my weight is almost going forward. He kicks, block, again, leg block, again, leg lock, switch, then counter with this kick. You can use many different motions here. Block, switch, kick, follow this position again, switch, one two punch or whatever. Oops. 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 Let's practice this movement. Left foot front fighting stance. Okay, let's go five times and then switch sides. Ready? Oops. I go one. Again, keep in mind you can use any counter after using the leg block. Three. But what's important is that after the leg block, Four. do not make your weight go backwards. Use a Five. forward motion after the leg block so that you can yeah, follow up side. appropriately. It. Some. Cheap. Oh. Now we'll get into specific partner conditioning drills. This is a close up of the contact area made in this particular partner drill. I'll elaborate on that here. Next action, you're going to hold the knee just like a judo fashion. Left hand grab the lapel, right hand grab the sleeve this way. Okay. When we practice the slow kick motion, mostly this is conditioning here. We're going to work to the inside of the thigh. Okay, very similar to the other conditioning method here. So I'm going to count one, kick, then the other side, kick. Again, kick, the other side, kick. Now, what, eventually what I want you to work into, you have to start out just to get the feeling now here from each other, kicking. Then, eventually, I want you to get a little bit pull action here when you kick. Again, kick, right, this action here, again here, right? So, the idea is you control and control here, then you work the low kick. Oops. Everybody understand? Oops. Then you work the rear, kicking the back leg with your back leg to the inside of the thigh. The same. Okay. So what happens here, you learn how to make the proper adjustments. Usually, with the low round, you can practice big motion. From here, you learn how to control the knee, how you can, how you travel the knee in, what path it takes. You understand? So from here, I can attack the inside of the thigh. Okay, again, good. From this position here, you learn how to attack from very close in position. Everybody understand? Oops. Then you practice both sides. Then the other side. Good. You understand? Let's try it. Same position as before. Grabbing the lapel and the sleeve. 
Now, we're kicking into each other's shins here, so don't mash up this action here. Everybody understand? Oops, nice oops. and easy. Lift up, touch. Lift up, touch. This action. Eventually, you build up, but this takes time, okay? From here, just this action. Okay? Then what you do is you work different parts of the shin. You feel which part of the shin you need training on. Everybody understand? Oops. Then with the back leg, a little bit nice and easy. Nice and easy, this action. Are you ready to say Let's try a few times. Oops. Oops. Do a count. Hold it straight. Okay, hold the lapel. Ten times with the left leg. So again, what's very nice important in this judo side. type fashion Oops. training drill is that your kicks will become more fighting oriented. The previous drills will then show you how to make your basic kicks into fighting kicks. Here I'd like to introduce you a slightly different shin kick. Here we're looking at the proper distance that's needed for a good shin kick. But what happens is if you're in close, you can't get the proper range of motion. So you want to make a slight adjustment coming in from the outside and using a slightly different angle, a different blade of the shin. As opposed to the top part, you're going to use the inside part of the blade shin. Inside this position here. Now, the idea is very close fighting, I take a more balance, and we strike here with the inside part of the shin, of the blade of the shin, okay? So very close fighting here, you can still work a low kick, low kick action. Make sure the foot is below the foot angle, everybody understand? Ooh, striking nice. with the side of the shin this way. So from this position here, okay, the idea is that you strike in the correct part of the thigh here, everybody understand? Ooh, so the idea is here, striking with the outside, outside of the shin. Understand? Let's go. Let's go. Front line first five times. Left foot front fighting stance. Okay, grab the gi. Although this kick requires specific circumstances, Two. it is a sneaky kick that can get in Three. while your opponent is not on guard. Four. Five. And by using your arms, you can Side manipulate switch. him, Make taking sure more balance. balance as you kick. Ready? so that his thigh one. area is more exposed. Two, three, four, five. In this next series of drills, I show the proper distance that's necessary for good low kicking techniques. Here, I'm practicing a distance drill. I'm keeping constant contact with my partner as we move up and down. That's basically an introduction to the distance that's required for the kicks. Here we start off with basically the inner thigh kick. Again, what's key here is reading your opponent's body movement as he throws the kick. What are signs that you can pick up when fighting somebody throwing the kicks, as well as learning proper accuracy and where to land with your kick. Here we're looking at the outside thigh kick. The difference here from tape one is that we basically showed a one-sided aspect of low kicks. One person practicing, whether it be on a device or another opponent. Here we're looking at two skilled people in low kicks and how they can combine the techniques together. Here we're looking at an inside and an outside kick. Now notice after the first kick, the slight skipping back that's involved. This is critical for readjusting the distance that's necessary for a good back leg low kick. So we're looking at a lead leg and a back leg low kick. Skipping back and setting the proper distance for the rear leg. We're going to look at the same technique, but now we're integrated with a high kick. A lead leg, inner thigh kick, skip back, and then high roundhouse kick. So you can see how very important it is to have good footwork when integrating your low kicks with other techniques. When skipping back, you may also want to sneak in a couple of punches also. This is all up to you. Here we're looking at a kind of a fight scenario that I described earlier 
My opponent is attacking me with a low kick and then following up with a lead and reverse hand punch. I'm blocking appropriately and then following up with my own knee kick. Here I snuck in an elbow technique. Again, you can see how you can continue adding and elaborating on the techniques. So the attacker uses a leg kick and a one-two punch. The defender is deflecting and parrying techniques and following up with his own knee attack. This may be complicated, so if you want, rewind and review the techniques or make up your own. This is what I like to call controlled sparring. I'd say we're going at about 75% maximum power so that we have a good idea of the effectiveness of the techniques. But what we're doing is alternating turns. It's not choreographed, it's all arbitrary techniques. So it helps develop reflex timing and effective combinations and setups. Notice what I try to do with every technique I throw, I do some form of low kick, whether it be a knee or a shin kick or a side kick or what have you, and combine it with some other technique whether it's hand combinations or spinning kicks. Again, the key here to safety is that we know whose turn it is. So we're alternating turns, but at the same time, the techniques are arbitrary. I'd say this is one of the most effective ways to practice sparring. Watch how the heights change, the tempos of the techniques change, the head movements, the fakes. This is critical for proper technique integration. So the objective here is to make it as real as possible, but still maintaining safety and creating an environment conducive to learning the technique. <laughs> 